Okay, one of the uh, areas of control, well, uh, sets of controls, I suppose, um, is uh, training. I mean, we talked about this back in security management. We've talked about it more recently um, in specific areas, but in in general, yes, your your training, uh, instruction, control by instruction um, by documentation um, you've got uh, again you know the policies uh, and so they should be documented and clearly uh, so that people understand uh, what it is that you do um, I uh, recently ran into some uh, uh, documentation and instructions that I, uh, you know, must have seen, seemed very clear to the person at the time, but um, there was an awful lot of uh, possibilities in terms of alternate interpretations of how it was done. So, uh, you know, be clear in your documentation, be clear in your training, um, uh, you know, document your, your equipment, your systems. Um, have... Uh, procedures um, and training for the procedures in uh, startup in uh, error conditions what types of error conditions are to be handled in what ways um, uh, the uh, well we talked about startup you know shutdown as well uh, restoring from backup um, how does that work and and uh, what do we do in that regard? Um, do we, uh, you know, if, if we're restoring from a backup, um, I mean, there are security considerations. The backup is unparalleled, in my opinion, as a security tool. But um, if you have a system's vulnerability and you have uh, corrected that vulnerability, and then you have a, uh, you know, restoring, a, a situation where you need to restore from backup, are you restoring the vulnerability? Uh, has that backup got the, uh, you know, the extra protection that needed to be put in place? Um, is there documentation for what to do once you have done the basic restoration? to restore additional uh, security settings that may be required to deal with specific vulnerabilities. So, you know, all of these things. Now, training, as I have mentioned before, is, uh, you know, over the years, so many people have told me, um, secu you know, security training, security awareness training, um, it's no good. Uh, people don't listen. Well, yeah, people don't get it perfectly. They only remember 75% uh, of what you said immediately after you say it. And that's if they're listening carefully. And if you're boring, you know, it's going to go way down from there. Um, so, you know, do your training properly is, is one of the first things. But even then, you know, after... Um, uh, day possibly it's down to 30% maybe um, for the average not directly part of my job operation on a daily basis type uh, material the uh, you know and then after a, a week you know we're probably down to 15% so yeah um, there are well, uh, training is imperfect. Um, you, you know, it's not one and done. You have to keep doing it. You have to do it in different ways to reinforce the important parts. Uh, like I said before, you know, look at it as advertising. But like I, I think I also said before, um, the, uh, the pandemic gave us here in BC... Um, a really really good example of uh, the importance of 
security training in uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry's uh, policies and uh, her uh, pretty much daily um, updates. Now, in, in terms of the updates, they, they were a tremendous example of presenting a very complex topic, which, I mean, it was a press conference, so the press seemed determined to deliberately misinterpret pretty much everything that was said there. And she was patient. Uh, she never lost her cool. Uh, but th uh, the other aspect of it was that it was a, you know, a really um, good example of how to deal with a, an extremely complex topic to an audience that, you know, really uh, were not specialists in this area, and it was vitally important. But the other thing was that it proves that even imperfect training uh, is very vitally important. Um, one of the questions that the press kept on bringing up was, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, what are you, how are you going to punish people who fail to follow the policies? And uh, Dr. Bonnie's answer was always based on a kind of an axiom, educate rather than mandate. Uh, she wasn't going to make draconian policies unless they were absolutely necessary. Um, the, the important thing was the briefings and the explanations, getting people to understand why it was important to wear masks, not to gather in groups, um, so on and so forth. And I, I mean, I was writing uh, the book, um, uh, Security Lessons from COVID-19, um, at the time. And so I was paying attention, very close attention to the numbers around the world and noticing that if you compared BC to other uh, venues uh, with similar characteristics, that we are, our numbers in terms of deaths, just, just deaths, let's take that, uh, we're far lower. I mean, you know, the, the numbers in terms of uh, people off sick, um, uh, hospital admissions, uh, they were all down as well. But just the deaths, um, looking at deaths, we can say that in a period of five months uh, that I was particularly interested in, um, Bonnie Henry and her, her policies and, and the principles that she uh, espoused and, and followed saved 5,000 lives there. Um, at one point, again, we could say that she saved the lives of 15 people per day. So, um, yes, training, even if imperfect, is important. It is effective. It's not perfect, but we never expect any other tool to be perfect. We concentrate on layered defense. So do the same thing with regard to training.